of the headlines. Now we'll return back to the press conference. That every leader, virtually every leader that I dealt with said is that uh, congratulations, it's incredible what's happened to the American economy. We're the best economy in the world. And it's something, and it started from election day. I put it out yesterday because we took a tremendous boost uh, from the day after I got elected. The stock market went crazy from that point until essentially now. I think uh, we hit in certain of the markets, we hit the all time high again for many, many times. I can't tell you what it was, but many, many times we broke the record and uh, we uh, were. You know, our stock market is great. Our jobs are great. We have the best job numbers, essentially, we've ever had. In some categories, definitely, we've ever had. Uh, the minimum, you could say, is in 51 years, but it's really more than that, and now it's going to be more than that. Uh, African-American, Asian-American, you saw that. Hispanic-American, uh, the best numbers in history, the history of our country. We have the lowest unemployment numbers, best numbers. And uh, many others, too. Blue-collar workers are doing fantastic. They're the biggest uh, beneficiary of the tax cuts, the blue-collar. Blue-collar, you know, we talk about for the rich, it's really for everybody. And it's also big companies where they're moving here. And remember who owns the stocks, because the people that own the stock, it's not the big companies. It's the people with 401ks whose numbers are 60 percent and 70 percent and 42 percent and all different numbers that are tremendously high, where the other spouse thinks that the spouse that's investing in the 401k is a super genius, but those 401ks are very high. And if you listen to what I've been listening to, and we're not going to dev devote any time to it, but with that kind of an attitude, their 401ks are going to crash and the market would crash, because with what they want to do, you would crash the market. And the amount of wealth that would be lost would be incredible. But I'd rather wait till later in the campaign to say that, because to be honest with you, I want them to go and take these policies and bring them up. I don't want them to change them anytime soon. Let them go have a good time. But it's been very interesting to watch what's happening. Actually, I found it very interesting. So with that, we'll take a few questions. And then I'm heading out to South Korea. And uh, may or may not see Kim Jong-un, but we'll be heading out to uh, South Korea, spend about a day and a half there with President Moon, who's a really good guy. He was here, too, as you know. I saw him. I met with him also. And uh, we'll see what happens. Please, John. Thanks, Katie. Uh, Mr. President, thanks so much uh, for joining us here. Yes. Uh, we all appreciate it. Uh, it's always good to have a chance to ask questions of you right. directly. Can you tell us a little more about how, how this China deal may work going forward? Because Chinese officials have told Fox News that they will not make any concessions until all of the tariffs have been lifted. They also want relief on Huawei. They want to take it off the blacklist. Uh, they might want you to stop pursuing extradition of Meng Wanzhou. Can you tell us how you see all of this unfolding? And if you uh, do meet Kim Jong-un at the DMZ tomorrow, would you step across the border into North Korea? Sure, I would. I would. I'd feel very comfortable doing that. I would have no problem. With respect to uh, China. Uh, basically, we agreed today that we were going to continue the negotiation, which I ended a while back. And we're going to continue the negotiation. Uh, we agreed that I would not be putting tariffs on the $325 billion that I would have the ability to put on if I wanted. Uh, that uh, we're, you know, we're fairly advanced, depending on that was President of the United States, Donald Trump, addressing a press conference. And during the, his press conference, he said he has met a lot of uh, world leaders and the meetings have been very productive. He talked about the uh, asylum policies of the uh, United States. And he also said he had great meetings with Chinese President Xi. And the has agreed to start negotiating and will not impose further tariffs and china is going to start investing in the farms that's all for now we'll keep you updated on the press conference of donald trump right now we'll continue with the news stories as the annual summit of the group of 20 nations has ended with several key sideline meetings in osaka japan this year's summit discussed removing barriers to economic growth the data revolution and combating climate change as well as the top-level talks, ministerial-level meetings of member states were held in eight Japanese cities. 
Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe says the summit has confirmed the need for a free, fair and non-discriminatory trade policy. U.S. President Donald Trump and Chinese President Xi Jinping have agreed to restart trade talks. Both leaders took part in a much-anticipated meeting on the sidelines of the G20 summit. Trump says he had an excellent meeting with the Chinese president and the two countries are back on track. Replying to Trump, President Xi Jinping said cooperation and dialogue are better than confrontation. The U.S. President has also met the Saudi Arabia Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. During the meeting, Trump told the Prince he's doing a spectacular job. In his final meeting of the summit, the U.S. President sat down with Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. The two countries are at odds over Turkey's purchase of the Russian S-100 missile system. China says a new United States defense policy bill will harm Sino-U.S. relations. This comes a day after the U.S. Senate passed the $750 billion defense budget. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Zheng Zhuang says Beijing has lodged stern representations with the U.S. on the issue. The defense bill contains provisions targeting China on issues from technology transfers to the sale of synthetic opioids. Zheng says the U.S. should objectively view China's deployment and not allow any negative China-related content to become law. The legislation, it's called the National Defense Authorization Bill, is still several steps from becoming law. U.S. President Donald Trump is inviting North Korean leader Kim Jong-un to meet him at the fortified frontier dividing North and South Korea. Trump says he wants to shake hands and say hello to Kim at the border. President Trump is leaving for Seoul for a two-day trip after attending today's session of the G20 summit. Trump's meeting with Kim is meant to revive the stalled denuclearization talks with North Korea. North Korea's foreign ministry responded saying Trump's offer is very interesting, but Pyongyang has yet to receive formal proposals from the United States. Representatives from the U.S. and Taliban meet in Doha today for the seventh round of talks on the conflict in Afghanistan. This comes days after U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said Washington is hoping for an Afghan peace agreement before September 1st. Special Envoy Zalmi Khalil Zad is leading the U.S. delegation. Khalil Zad has already held six round of talks with the Taliban in the Qatari capital. Iran says it has filed a complaint to the United Nations against the United States over the violation of its airspace. The complaint states that Tehran reserves the right to respond firmly if the U.S. repeats the violation. Iran's Deputy Foreign Minister Ghulam Hussein says the complaint has been submitted under Article 51 of the United Nations Charter. Tensions between Tehran and Washington intensified after Iran's military shot down a U.S. spy drone. Iran says progress has been made at a meeting in Vienna on its nuclear accord, but it's still not enough. Tehran's Deputy Foreign Minister Abbas Arakchi says European countries offered too little to persuade his government to save the deal. The European Union says the deal's remaining signatures intensify efforts to normalize trade with Iran. It says a special EU channel to allow trade with Iran and avoid U.S. sanctions is now operational. China's representative, Fu Kong, says every state has expressed concerns about U.S. sanctions on Tehran. The point is that uh, all countries have expressed their regret on the uh, U.S. unilateral withdrawal and the uh, imposition of sanctions, and also in particular the, uh, the, uh, the policy of uh, maximum uh, uh, pressure and so on the whole we think that this has been uh, a fairly good meeting and it is conducive to uh, easing the tension in the region. Moving on at least 15 people have been killed when a wall at the residential complex collapsed after heavy rains in the western Indian city of Pune. Police say the dead include four children and women. Pune has recorded over 73 millimeters of rain in the past 24 hours, the second highest June rainfall since 2010. 
This week, 31 people were killed during thunderstorms in the eastern state of Bihar. Meanwhile, nearly half a million people have signed online petitions pressing the government to declare a climate emergency. Now, Turkey's President Tayyip Erdogan says there are no setbacks in the deal to buy the Russian S-400 missile system. Erdogan says all eyes are on the delivery process expected in the first half of July. His remarks came ahead of his meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin on the sidelines of the G20 summit in Japan. The United States has warned of consequences if Turkey goes ahead with the deal. Ankara says it will not back down, irrespective of any U.S. sanctions. Now, Libya's eastern forces commander Khalifa Haftar has ordered his troops to attack Turkish ships and interests in the country. Haftar accuses Istanbul of providing drones and weapons to his rival government in Tripoli. The eastern forces say orders have been given to the air force to target Turkish naval vessels in their territorial waters. Haftar's forces say all Turkish nationals on Libyan territory will be arrested. Turkey has supplied drones and trucks to forces allied to Tripoli. Prime Minister Fayez al-Siraj, the Libyan National Army, launched an offensive to take the capital Tripoli in early April. The fighting between government forces and rebels in Syria's Hawa province has killed nearly 100 combatants. The battle began when Syrian forces bombarded rebel fortifications and defense lines. Syria's official news agency says the bombardment is a response to attacks on villages and cities in Hama. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights say 51 government loyalists and 45 rebels are among the dead. Meanwhile, Ethiopian officials have arrested the regional Amhara political party spokesperson after last week's foil coup attempt. The government has also appointed a new army chief of staff. Earlier, the government arrested 250 people in the capital, the Sababa and Amhara region. 56 of the prisoners are members of the political party, which promotes the Amhara interests. The country has been on a knife edge since the army's chief of staff and three other senior officials were killed in the failed takeover. The government blames a rogue general and his militia for the attempted coup. More news coming up after a short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Now, moving on, French lawmakers have launched an ambitious attempt to block the government's sale of its stake in Paris's airport. They want 4.7 million signatures to delay the sale of 51% share in the capital's airport worth 9 billion euros. The French government wants to sell parts of Aéroports de Paris, the operator of Charles de Gaulle Airport and Orly Airport. But it is facing broad opposition due to concerns over the loss of an income stream and influence in the transport sector. Left-wing parties are distributing flyers, putting up posters and holding public meetings to gain support for the petition calling for a referendum. In all the big countries with liberal economies, the big airports have stayed under state control. There is only one example, it's Heathrow Airport. And now I can tell you that the British people regret the privatization of Heathrow. Privatization's opponents cite the example of France's motorways privatized in 2006, leading to toll hikes and eventually the yellow vest protests. The referendum's supporters believe that privatization could cost jobs. 
on a vu avec le scandale. In the scandal of the privatization of the highways, we saw that when you privatize, it is no longer the common good that prevails. It is the pursuit of profit. So we know well that when we give up the Paris airports, first of all, it is the entry point of passengers. It is about the borders, and it brings up the question of security, which should be a national concern. French President Emmanuel Macron says he supports the initiative for a referendum and is committed to the democratic process. Yeah. Consistent with our constitution, there was an initiative taken so that signatures would be gathered and that a project that reviews this privatization can be examined by the National Assembly. And if this is not the case, be submitted to a referendum. The privatization of Paris airports is a crucial part of Macron's modernization plans for the French economy. The captain of a migrant rescue ship has been arrested by the Italian police and taken away for questioning. Sea Watch 3 Captain Carolo Raquet docked the ship in Italy's Lampedusa port early today after defying orders from the Italian government. The ship with 42 rescued migrants on board has been brought to the docks after being anchored off the island for three days. Earlier, Interior Minister Matteo Salvini refused to allow the migrants to enter Italy, despite growing pressure from the inside the country and Europe. Salvini says they broke the law by ignoring orders not to enter the Italian waters. Small demonstrations in cities including Rome, Milan and Palermo have expressed solidarity with the Sea Watch crew and the migrants. The United States has imposed sanctions on Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro's son. The Treasury Department accuses Maduro Guerrera of corruption and keeping humanitarian aid out of the country. The action freezes any U.S. assets belonging to Guerrera and prevents American nationals from doing business with him. Treasury Secretary Stephen Chinchin says the U.S. will continue targeting the relatives of regime insiders who benefit from Maduro's corruption. The United Nations says heat waves will become more intense in the future and will last longer. The warning comes in the middle of a record heat wave in Europe. More details to follow. This year is expected to be the world's hottest ever. Europe's ongoing record heat wave is proof of it, which will last until next week. France witnessed its hottest day with the mercury hitting 45 degrees Celsius. We're still only the end of June, um, but it seems like uh, Earth is set to experience its five warmest years on record. So that's 2015 to 2019 inclusive. Um, this year we're still halfway through, but you know it seems that it's going to be head heading to be one of the warmest on, on record. Meanwhile, a red alert has been issued for seven provinces in Spain as two people lost their lives. The stifling heat has caused wildfires with 5,500 hectares of land ablaze in Spain's Catalonia. Germany, Poland and the Czech Republic have also recorded their highest ever temperatures for June. We can't attribute this specific heat wave specifically to climate change. It's too early to do that. It's still ongoing. But it is absolutely consistent with what we expect from climate change. Meteorologists blame hot air drawn in from northern Africa for the extreme temperature in Europe. Meanwhile, in Vietnam, a new art exhibition has been turning trash into treasure. The Plastic Planet show is meant to raise public awareness about environmental waste. More in this report. Vietnam is one of Asia's worst polluters. Its two cities, capital Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh, collect about 80 tons of plastic waste every day. Around 60 artists in Hanoi have joined hands to draw attention to the crisis of pollution. Adding value to the garbage material, the artists have showcased artworks made out of plastic waste. I can see the potential beauty inside of the things that people see are rubbish and throw away. For example, I can see the beauty of nylon bags. I can see multicolor light from them. I want to give them new value. The plastic waste material used in the artworks has been donated by the people of Hanoi. One artwork has been crafted with nearly 300 kilograms of straws, water bottles and other plastic waste. I am most impressed with the tornado artwork because the message from it is very clear and it has touched my emotions. I feel there is a plastic tornado is sweeping our living environment. 
nhựa nó đang tàn phá một đường sống của mình. Amid rising waste levels, Vietnam's Prime Minister has called for drastic measures to reduce plastic waste. The European Union and South American trade bloc Mercosur have agreed to a historic trade deal. It's thought to be one of the world's largest regional commercial accords. The agreement comes after 20 years of talks between the EU and members of the Mercosur, including Argentina, Brazil and Uruguay. The negotiations frequently stall because of European farmers' sensitivities over the beef market. Brazil has called the agreement historic, while Argentina says it's unprecedented. European Commission President Jean-Claude Jacquin says he welcomed the agreement reached amid international trade tensions. This is a landmark agreement for a number of reasons. Firstly, it shares highs. The agreement reached today will create a free trade area covering 760 million people, bringing two continents together closer in a spirit of openness and cooperation. Now, Johnny Ive, the designer behind the classic designs of the iPhone, iPod and Mac, is leaving the tech giant Apple. I will leave the company later this year. He's setting up an, an independent design company with Apple among its primary clients. The designer says his agency, called Love From, will launch in 2020. Now let's have a look at the weather updates around the world. Well, that's all for now. For more news and updates, keep watching Indus News.